unboxing the Corsair K70 Pro TKL. If you guys wanna check it out, there are Amazon links below, 40 US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's get this unboxed. Now this is like one of those Hall Effect keyboards, so it has the ability to change its actuation along that keystroke, which is really cool. There's some warranty guide stuff, other paperwork here, but let's get to the keyboard itself. It comes in this nice, wrapping paper and this one is the white variant there's also a black variant if that's what you're into they have a nice little tab right here that is super nice and here is a keyboard heavier than i was expecting typically these like more gamer brands like razer hyperx their keyboards honestly especially razers like they have decent switch feel but the gamer brands have typically lagged way behind the actual custom mechanical keyboard community this one feels solid out of the box. Okay, so firstly, we have a metal plate here. It's really nice brushed aluminum. That actually looks really nice. Look over here, you can see it better. Uh, and there's a real texture to it and it's and it's real metal for sure, that's cold. The other thing is the keycaps are like slightly blue. They're kind of like icy. Unless I'm just like, my eyes are just messing up. They kind of look like an icy blue, which looks pretty cool. The other thing is this is metal and ooh, that is a satisfying you hear that? That sounds so satisfying. And as far as wobble, there's a teeny bit of wobble, but that's solid. That feels great. That feels much more like a mechanical keyboard, like genuinely custom. That's impressive. Then we have some other buttons here that are supposed to like glow with RGB, which is pretty cool. They have a very like quick travel. It's not like a mechanical switch, but honestly it feels pretty good for what it is. But then this outside here is all plastic, but it's a single piece. So like they've got really nice angles. Honestly, I'm really impressed with this. This feels far different than Corsair's other keywords they've done in the past. They have the Corsair logo on the bottom flip up switches that are all like a rubber, which is really nice. USB-C on the right side. So if you have a custom keyboard cable, you can kind of come over nicely. But this thing feels solid. Like it's much heavier than I was expecting. And literally look at that, zero flex. That's solid guys. All right, let's continue going through the unboxing. So we have the cable right here. It's just your average USB type C cable, but Corsair makes it a little bit nicer. It's also like kind of, I think gray on the ends and then white here. Uh, which does make it look a little bit more unique. So I do like that. Uh, also, it comes with a wrist dress, which is super nice. And obviously because this is the white one, it's color matched, the black one will obviously be color matched. That's everything in the box, but that is nice. It actually has a texture to it. So if you can see here, it's got the Corsair kind of like triangles in here, Corsair branding down the middle. It's very nice and soft. And then it's got rubber all on the bottom plastic and look at you can see the magnetic pieces right there so let's see how it snaps together very nicely yeah it can move a little bit but if you have any force on it it's not moving at all so that's nice before we get too into the switches the keycaps and everything like the stabilizers which i'm actually really excited about let's do a little bit of a weight test here this weighs in at 971.5 grams. That is a decent weight. Like I said, this thing is genuinely heavy. Okay, let's go over the keycaps here. Let's see if we can take one off. The keycaps here are shine through. Uh, they are smooth on the sides, pretty much smooth on the sides and a slight texture on top. Honestly, they feel pretty good. You can see the thickness here is actually decent. They're not super, super thin, but that actually gives us way to the switches here. Okay, there is a little bit of scratchiness, but it's not grainy. It's just like a smooth. I mean, these feel really, really good. That's really quite impressive, honestly. They also have what looks like a magnifier over the RGB, which should also kind of help it diffuse it in a way, um, but also not lose any of that light, which is great. But if you are at all familiar with gaming brands, keyboards, you know that stabilizers are where they fail most of the time. They sound like crap and typically they're rattly. So let's see how this is. Come on, Corsair, don't let me down here. We're gonna go for the space bar, the hardest one. Wow, that's pretty impressive. It does have a tick. I'm sure you guys can hear. I'm gonna put the mic up to it. You can hear it does have a tick. Let's try the other ones. That sounds great. Feels good as well. Same here, same there. A slight tick there, but this one, it's so weird because all the other ones sound great. And interesting, it looks like they have different switches over here. Maybe these are Hall Effect, but over here are not Hall Effect. That's what it looks like, very interesting. I need to reevaluate the switches over here then. These are also really smooth. I mean, these, these have gotta be, these might be even smoother. Yeah, these are even smoother. The stem wobble too. These are definitely a little bit tighter. These are much louder over here. So as a gaming switch, they sound actually pretty good. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I'm gonna take my mic off, do a little sound test. 
See, those are the louder ones over here. So it looks like just this is the Hall effect switches and then like your F row and over here is like normal switches, which is very interesting. But I really like the sound of these. But the spacebar does have that tick. However, of all the keyboards that Corsair had, I think their only Hall Effect one for a little bit there was like a full size. Might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. It's really nice to have a 10 key less form factor here. Plus you get that knob. The only thing I would say is it's a little crowded with this here. Like getting to the knob is like the same height as this. So you can see like actually pressing it, you kind of have to press that down or go kind of like that, I guess, which is fine. It's just a little bit crowded, but this is by far Corsair's best keyboard yet for gamers, especially with the Hall effect switches. And then the overall build quality being like good, like for a gaming keyboard, not just that, but the thing that I didn't mention is that this also has an 8,000 Hertz polling rate. Yes, that's overkill, but you're paying a decent amount of money for this keyboard. So, I mean, it's cool that it has like the fastest polling rate you're ever gonna need in a keyboard, very much overkill, but also very cool. Now, obviously by the sound, you can hear there's a dang lot of dampening in here, which typically gaming brands don't do. So good on Corsair for doing that. I'm really impressed with the build quality. I like the feel. The only thing I really dislike is the space bar because of that tick. I tried reseating it, but yeah, the ticks there, probably not too big of a deal to remedy. But let's check out the RGB and then do a gaming test. Now on the desk, let's plug it in and do the RGB. I am using the standard cable just to make sure we get like full 8,000 Hertz and I'm using it in its total stock form. Let's plug this in, but before, I'm gonna turn the lights off. And the moment of truth, let's plug it in. There we go, very nice and bright. Oh, these look really cool. That looks really great. Now let's go into straight into IQ. Right now guys, we're just updating the firmware. And there we go, firmware was complete. So let's go into the keyboard now. All right, so this little info here is actually telling us, okay, so this button here is the game mode. So if I press that, it turns game mode on, sets it to a static color. That's where you're gonna get the 8,000 Hertz pulling rate. It also does a Windows lock, so Windows does not come up. You don't go out of your game. That's pretty cool. They previously had that as like a game switch, but the button way better. And then you're right back to all of your RGB settings. Obviously the RGB here looks great. These buttons are super bright, but the cool thing is because this is like a brushed aluminum back here, it like reflects off of the aluminum even more than just a normal keyboard, but you also see the texture in the back of the RGB. It looks great. Obviously they do RGB well, I would expect that. But here in the settings, while I personally don't really love IEQ as it can be a little bit annoying to work with, you can customize everything you want. You can make it really, really fast here. We can do like a rain effect. You can do tons of effects. They have a watercolor effect and you have a bunch of custom stuff like a gradient and I can add different colors here. Let's say we add like a blue and then the other side is like a pink and then we add another one and then we have solid colors so we can add a few different solid colors. So we can make certain things that color and then we can add another one. There's just a lot of things you can do here once IQ is actually working. We can add a ton of different colors here. We can make any key we want. There's a lot of customization. You can really spend a long time here, which is a really cool thing. You can also make your own wave colors, especially with the RGB. There's a lot of things you can do. Getting IQ to work is not always easy, but it's much harder with like PC components than it is with stuff like keyboard. So that is a good thing. Now also in here, we have key assignments. There's a ton of stuff you can do remapping. You can set up like macros, voice commands. It's pretty cool you can do that. And you can do the device memory mode, which basically means any setting that you set on IQ, you actually don't need IQ for anymore. The keyboard itself will save that which is a very helpful thing, especially if you've had problems with IQ, but you get it to work, set it in that, and you'll always have the settings that you want. You also have key actuations. So you can literally change the actuation, like how fast you want it to actuate. And you can see, you can only select these because again, this part is the only part with those Hall effect switches. Those are the Hall effect ones. So you can actually set a color indicator uh, for all of your different presets, uh, but you can change the actuation all the way up to 0.1, where previous Corsair keyboards, I don't think we could actually go to 0.1. So that's definitely an upgrade here. Um, all the way down to literally the bottom of four millimeters, which is insane. Most keyboards that are non hall effect are gonna be like two millimeters, 1.8. But here having it at 0.1 basically means if I go in here and just touch the keyboard, it's, it's typing, it's typing, like just barely touching it. So 
That's what I personally like for gaming, a super fast one. But then beyond that, you can even set your reset point where you want it to reset, or you can do rapid trigger. And in rapid trigger, you can also set your sensitivity so you can do it at 0.1, so it literally is basically just on all the time, uh, or you could set it at one millimeter. I'm gonna set it at 0.5, but there's a lot of other stuff you can also do in here. You also have the control dial, which is very cool. So you can do like that will control the brightness. You can do vertical scrolling and then brightness control, obviously, so we can turn it down. Uh, or obviously you can just do normal volume, which is nice. This, this freaking knob though is so nice and tactile. They did a really great job here. But guys, with that, let's jump in game, see how this thing does. So guys, automatically, obviously I'm gonna play Black Ops 6 and the keyboard is automatically, like it automatically set its own mode for Black Ops 6. So it's obviously optimized for that, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, jumping right in game, I do have obviously rapid trigger on, super fast actuation, so it's like you just barely touch it. And obviously it's super fast. Really, really nice. I do like the feeling. It's a very firm keyboard. There's no bounce, obviously. This isn't like gasket mounted or anything like that. I do like the feeling of it. These switches are really nice. They're nice and smooth, uh, which is honestly something that I did not expect quite from Corsair. Obviously at all having Hall Effect switches uh, is goaded. Um, for me, it's like a must in game. I also do think it's pretty cool that it just immediately just recognized uh, COD, which was, I don't know. I just think that's a little bit special, which is kind of what you want in game. The shift here feels great, which obviously you're gonna be pressing a lot. The space bar. When I'm in game, I and I can't hear that. I can't hear the, the ticking. It's like a non-issue. Um, but if I hear that ticking, I'm not big on it. Initially, it wasn't a big deal, but if you if you listen to that ticking all day long, it's not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be fun, honestly. But the space bar feels totally fine. Like when I'm, when I'm in game with headphones on, it's completely okay. And honestly, this is probably my favorite Corsair keyboard that they've ever made. Um, it feels much more special and it definitely feels more of its price point uh, whereas most of the other keyboards before that, they just like never feel their price. I mean, this is still an expensive keyboard, but this probably feels the best out of any of the gamer brands, at least currently. Yeah, I really like this. The other nice thing is like in COD, I almost never actually just hit a uh, control to lay down. Uh, I just bump it a little bit. So when I'm like jumping to lay down in COD, I just tap it with my pinky so I can just lay down super easily. And with this, it happens really quickly because you barely have to touch it. See, I'm laying down every time I hit that. And I even don't need to push down as much as I am. I can just literally just go like that and I'm laying down. And that's like the really nice thing about having that like custom actuation. Overall guys, not just that, but it's actually supposed to be compatible with the Xbox, which is pretty cool, which I guess we can test for like two seconds. All right, so I'm gonna plug this into the Xbox right here. And as you can see, it's going back to that other lighting, taking in and out of game mode, because I didn't do the save to the memory, but if you save to the memory, it would stay on the setting that you kept it on uh, in IQ, which is really cool. All right, with it plugged in, yep, works great literally did nothing and it immediately works right away. The other thing I didn't mention is that this in-game was super nice. Obviously I have adjustable armrests here, but for this to be here, have the contact point of my elbow there and then my wrist here, and then that there, it was really, really nice. This is actually a very, very comfortable wrist rest. And the fact that you get this included is actually worth something, I would say. It's actually one of the most comfortable wrist rests I think I've used. Overall, do I recommend this? Absolutely. Obviously, it is a big price to pay, but if you want all the customization, the software, the really good RGB, and obviously the fact that it can go into its gamer mode and have 8,000 hertz and have everything else, and you have the whole rapid trigger adjustable actuation. Yeah, this is the best keyword Corsair has ever made. Again, if you wanna check it out, there are Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But this was Consumer Tech Review High Speed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.